Well, I got a package in the mail today, and as you can tell by this wonderful logo here on the packing tape, it's from Parts Express. Man, it, does, it doesn't feel like there's much in there, though. It is a 300-watt Class D subwoofer plate amplifier. Boy, is it light. Owner's manual and the amp itself. There's not much to this. Take it out of the plastic and see what we're dealing with. See, when you look at this on the product page of Parts Express, it looks like this great big thing and, and all the switch gear and stuff's just tiny on it. You don't realize it's how small it is. My hands are kind of big, but it's uh, it's really not big at all. So we've got the we've got the plug here that goes into the wall for mains voltage. We have an LED power indicator light on the left. To the right of that we have a USB-A power supply connection. That's 5 volts, half an amp. That's to power something like a Bluetooth receiver or something like that. Next to that we have the volume knob and to the right of that the frequency adjustment knob goes from 40 hertz to 200 hertz. To the right of that we have a phase switch, 180 degrees or 0 degrees. To the right of that we have the on off switch auto or not auto and then we have uh, the bass boost on or off up is off down is on a little backwards there and then we have the rca low level input uh, rca jacks on the right below that covered in plastic is the switch for the 110 or 220 volts and underneath that is the main power switch and underneath that is mains voltage input with the fuse it's pretty small it's about the size, maybe a little bit smaller, of the 70 watt uh, unit that Dayton sells. It's not much bigger than the 25 watt unit that they sell. The um, I'll get you some better pictures, but this thing here is the heat sink. That's what's really doing the wicking away of heat. Looks to be a eighth of an inch or so uh, plate. So this is nice. This is a, this has a couple of uh, quick disconnect terminals on there. Fairly thick wire. It's wrapped in this foam stuff, so it won't rattle around. But man, this thing is so light. The main transformer is right here, and it's nothing. But it's Class D isn't. It's not too much to it. But um, it smells like electronics. So this is pretty small. Uh, I'll run it through its paces a little bit just to see what it can do. But man, this thing's a little bugger, and it doesn't weigh much at all. I've gotten now. One of the things I do like about it is that it's sort of it's not very deep. I'll put the dimensions on the on the screen, but it's just, I don't know, two and a half, less than three inches deep. So if you wanted to make a little sub-enclosure for this inside whatever cabinet, it wouldn't be hard to do. I mean, there's no big thing sticking out. Like some of them have like a board that sticks out like this that you got to work around. This is pretty easy. So, and it's sealed up with the black uh, sealant. And um, so it should be airtight. But I Lately, the past four or five sub-projects I've done, I've always made a separate enclosure, sub-enclosure, just out of half-inch stuff, but just to keep the really serious vibrations from flexing on, on a sheet of aluminum. It says it puts out 300 watts, I think, into 4-ohm uh, load. And, uh, so let me get this hooked up and run it through its paces a little bit. Okay, I've got the amp hooked up and turned on. I have it um, attached to a... Uh, the small new Dayton Epic subwoofer and I'm driving it with my Marlin P. Jones signal generator which has a pretty strong output. Uh, let me turn the volume down on the sub amp and turn it on. There it goes, we got some movement. I'll turn the, the signal generator at about two-thirds volume. I've got the sub amp at, well, let's see where it's at. Quarter up. That's about all that can take. <laughs> I've already pushed this Epic subwoofer through its paces uh, previously, so it's an amazing driver, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. So let me turn that down. Let me bring over. Now this is the, the uh, it's the Dayton RSS210 HF-4. It's the high fidelity 8 inch 
uh, reference series subwoofer, not the the new high excursion one. Of course, I don't think they have an eight inch of those, but. All right, well, let's turn it on again and see what this can do. How do I do that? On. Okay. What well, there? Some excursion. Feels like there's a helicopter flying overhead. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me turn the volume up some. It's pretty close to all that has to give, and we're a third of the way up on the volume of this. Pretty impressive. Let me let me take this thing downstairs. I have a 12 inch, an old 12 inch MK2 Titanic subwoofer. Let me plug this thing into that and see what that can do. What's the matter, Benson? You having trouble getting some rest? <laughs> Bored, huh? You must be going deaf, cat. Is that enough? So this is it. It's pretty light. Fairly simple. The circuitry looks. It's a lot more going on than your little, you know, Class D uh, desktop amplifier. But it looks pretty beefy looking. Look how narrow this thing is. That's really cool because you're going to be able to fit this in a lot of enclosures. And even if you like to make a small sub enclosure like I do out of maybe half inch MDF or something, it's really not going to be a big deal. It's not going to take up a lot of space. You're looking at something maybe six inch, inches by seven inches, maybe two and a half inches deep roughly. That's just a guess, but it's not going to take up a lot of interior volume. And it says it pr provides or produces 300 watts at um, with a 4 ohm load. That's pretty good for the size, you know. I used before the young 200 watt amplifier in my... Um, Tenacious 8 subwoofer project and that was about the right amount of power a little bit more actually than necessary for you know the 8 inch woofer that I used which was a tang band but having a little bit extra power never hurts um, and if this thing really can deliver close to 300 watts with the features that it has for the size that it is and for as light as it is for 150 bucks that's not a bad value.